function in China. One of them is uh, Ryzen. We are very happy to um, have with us the head of product management at Ryzen Energy, Ifang Song. Ifang is uh, yeah, uh, a solar pioneer. He's in the industry for nearly 15 years um, and worked in module R&D and product management and <clears throat> is now in charge of the product management at Ryzen. So we are really happy to have Ifang with us and tell us why he thinks HJT is the next big thing in solar cell technology. Welcome Ifang, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you. Thank you everyone. And uh, thanks for uh, telling news for this invitation. And also uh, very appreciate that I can share my opinion and the rising opinion and uh, on the HJT product. Let's let's see how to uh, how to share. You click on the green button, share screen, green, and then actually you simply select the frame you want to show. Okay, that works. So it works. <laughs> yes. Okay. Okay. So uh, let, let me start. So uh, my topic, uh, my topic now is uh, why HJT is the next big thing. Uh, so I think that first I can show you this picture. This picture I think uh, I think is very familiar for everyone in this webinar because it's a uh, it's a uh, it's uh, these photos used for a lot uh, for lot of persons to introduce how much ratio that PV energy can be used in future. But my point of view of here is that because we think uh, for the PV industry from the beginning, uh, from the beginning uh, to now, it's uh, 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 something uh, like a road for the for, for persons grow up. We can see that before the 2010, and we think uh, it is a pioneer, pioneer age. Maybe it's like, just like a baby. It still needs some uh, some person or maybe need a country to get to fed him because we still need a subsidy for the survive. But from the 2010 and 2020, we can see that the PV, uh, the, the, uh, our PV industry can be a younger man and uh, uh, be a youth because uh, this this time and uh, uh, this time uh, from this uh, this stage. Um, uh, the subsidy was decreased, but uh, uh, but uh, but uh, but the PV industry still uh, still grew up. And until 2020, we think because you know so far, at least in China, uh, we have already used the grid parity uh, policy, and uh, uh, for the power generation of the PV have have already equal to the normal normal energy generation. So we think that. Uh, from this time, we can see the PV industry has already uh, it just uh, grew up, and uh, I think it will be a very healthy environment for the PV growth in the future. And uh, and I think I remember when I just joined the PV industry, everybody we were talking about the module efficiency will be higher and how to increase the module power. But actually, this is just a very surface issue. The deep issue should be, or the core issue should be the uh, the LCOE, because so far uh, our module will sold to our customer for the for the power plant, for the rooftop uh, system. Everyone uh, they use the uh, power plant, they want to get a very cost effective things. So the LCOE is, uh, uh, I think, it is the only uh, criteria to judge that if the product or if the PV is worse, is worsable. So uh, uh, in this time, uh, at least in Ryzen, when we de develop a new product, and we, we will also check the LCOE as a crit final criteria to judge if this product can take the lowest LCOE than before and to the customer, the best benefit. And uh, talking about the cell efficiency, uh, I think the uh, the roadmap here for the cell efficiency and uh, and the technology road is uh, roadmap is very clearly. Uh, I will not mention it too much, but uh, for the cell efficiency increase, the selective career transport, 
is an inevitable choice for the high PGT uh, solar cell. And uh, so far we can see here the choice one, choice two, and the choice three is the just uh, uh, some selective carrier transport way uh, for to get higher efficiency. Uh, but uh, actually we'll be talking about the high to injection and the top count. And uh, we see, okay, the cell efficiency will be increased much, but does the high to injection exist only for its high efficiency? So this is a question I can explain later. And uh, everybody will see that in future, uh, what is the cell technology after the perk? Uh, and uh, but uh, I think one thing is very clearly: it will be the roadmap will be uh, from the P type to N type, but Topcon or HJT. So this is a question: if we compare these two technology, the Topcon and the HJT, we can see that uh, both technology have their own advantage and the disadvantage. Uh, so the same question, does the hydrojection exist only for its high efficiency? So for our opinion, uh, hydrojection can get a very high efficiency in future, but uh, our point of view is that uh, the main point for hydrojection, it is also a bridge and a platform to change them to the next uh, the, uh, to the next uh, cell generation. So this is most important. I think that for the capital market, they also invest uh, a lot of money and a lot of uh, energy into this uh, uh, hydrojection uh, technology. This is also one main reason that uh, the hydrojection has a very big potential for, for future and uh, it is uh, the platform and the bridge from the uh, single junction cell to the tandem cell. So here I just to put here. Uh, uh, so this uh, this this uh, this drawing here is just a new one, latest one from the Bloomberg, and uh, we can see that from the 2015 to 2020, I think this is this five years is the time period for the perk from the beginning to now. It almost doubled the. Uh, 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 double the capacity. I mean that at 2050, it's only 60 megawatt, uh, uh, gigawatt per year, but uh, uh, until 2020, uh, the capacity for PERC already reached 120 gigawatt. So it is a big approach for the cell technology and for the PV technology. So uh, if we consider about the uh, hydrogen junction cell, we think it could be the same in future. It could be the same in future, and uh, if we consider so, here I, I make a uh, make a chart for the consumption of the equipment, and uh, for example, it, I just put here as an example for the target material for the uh, silver paste, and if we consider in future if the head ejection uh, will be increased to 150 gigawatt in five years, there will there will be a very big market. in the industry for this. So I think this is also one reason that why the capital markets are very uh, focused on this technology. I think, uh, and also I think that if we consider the heterojunction technology, it's a body, the capital market is the wing of the, of the, of the technology. Uh, so in China, and I think that uh, there should be a three major period for the uh, for the high treaty uh, technology, and we just to mention it from the 2019 uh, to 2021. We call this the uh, period of explore and preparation, uh, like the period uh, of now uh, of this uh, of this period, and uh, you, we can see that lots of supplier and manufacturing uh, has already joined. Uh, it means that more players join the uh, hydrogen junction uh, research, uh, uh, research or the manufacturer, and also that uh, I remember a moment ago, uh, Professor Shen also show some uh, uh, show some page to see that some 500 megawatt uh, line skill line was invested. I, uh, this is the true. Uh, because I, I know that some supplier or manufacturer in China, they have already invested a lot of the test line to test 
uh, which equipment will be suitable uh, for the uh, for the uh, mass production and which material will be suitable for the mass production. So this is the period of the preparation. But uh, from 2022 to 2023, this will be a, a development period. And in this period, there will be the, uh, the equipment investment will be decreased much. And uh, due, to, uh, due to there will be some skillful production of the material. So the material price will also be, uh, be decreased. So this is also good for the industry for, uh, to the, for the further step for develop, de uh, development. And uh, also in this stage, we can see that some players uh, will enlarge their production line and the production skill maybe to the gigawatt. So this is also very uh, significantly uh, approach. Uh, I say we think that from the 2024, and uh, there will be a, per a period of the outbreak of the HGT uh, technology. So that time there will be the huge decrease of the equipment investment. And uh, it's also similar like the uh, perk technology in the 2015. And uh, together with the skill production and the supplement of the material, and uh, will make the non-silicon coast decrease much. Uh, and uh, I think for that time, and uh, the higher market acceptance uh, will be uh, will be uh, will be achieved, and it means that if the market was achieved, uh, so the. We think the HD uh, technology can instead of the perk cell for the next generation technology, mainstream technology. So let's introduce the uh, HGT, the Hato Junction uh, development achieved by Ryzen. So maybe first I can introduce a little about the Ryzen. So Ryzen is a PV company which founded at 1986 and at 2010, and uh, we have the we success, uh, success in the IPO in the Shenzhen market, stock market. And from that time, uh, uh, the company was, uh, uh, did, did, uh, the company was uh, de developed uh, very fast, very fast. So far we have the provisional post doctoral workstation. And we also have a lot of cooperation with the third party institute and some university uh, like the SGS, like the TUF. Uh, and uh, from the 2019, we just to invest and start our roads on the HDT technology. So we planned the 2.5 gigawatt capacity for the HDT production. Uh, okay, this is the uh, uh, main business of Ryzen. So we just produce the cell, the module, the UVA, and then we also produce the ribbon and some material of the, uh, of the module itself. Another, uh, another one is that we also focus on the uh, PV power project, such as the ETC and the residential uh, market and the utility skill project. This is also one of our main business. And another one, we also have the energy storage because we think in future, it's not only the, the module as a product, it should, should be the one station solution to supply to the customer, to the market, the whole energy management solution. And we also establish a, a very full, uh, full quality control chain from the raw material to the, to the final customer service. And uh, our, our, our laboratory also uh, also be the SENA certified national laboratory. In the laboratory, we can do all the IEC test uh, procedure and uh, and uh, and all of product will continue to make the test and all the material will continue to make the test in the laboratory. So uh, I think uh, uh, last one is that there should be a history uh, historical opportunities in in this time. So firstly is the large wafer, the two chain. So here's a, uh, uh, here is a picture that shows our, uh, our vice president, the technical vice presi uh, president, Dr. Huang. Uh, in 2009, he had a discussion with uh, Charlie Gay uh, uh, in Germany to talking about the, what is the final solution, the final size of the wafer, of the solar wafer. 
And uh, that time they get a conclusion that the 210, the 210 millimeter wafers. But uh, actually, uh, unlucky thing is that until the 2000, two, uh, 10 years later, 10 years later, 2019, and uh, this dream come to be true. And uh, 2000, I think it is uh, uh, 12th, uh, December, December the 12th, 2019, and the Ryzen has released our first uh, module product, which produced with the two ten uh, size uh, wafer and the cell. And, uh, and another uh, historical uh, issue is that is a HJT. So um, from this year, we can see that uh, not only the manufacturer, but also the capital market are focused on the uh, HJT uh, more and more. And uh, we think that it should be the trend. It is the trend. And uh, uh, and here is the uh, is uh, is our uh, two point gigawatt HJT project start. And uh, it is was the foundation is uh, uh, is August last year, and uh, from this uh, this line we produce the cell, and uh, so this cell the structure I think is also familiar with everyone in this webinar. So, but the difference is that our cell design is uh, with the, is with the multi bus bar. So for this design we use the nine bus bar. Uh, uh, this is a good technology because by the multi bus bar we can decrease the civil paste much. And uh, so far, uh, okay. So far, uh, I can introduce the the, the detail achievement of our second technology. But uh, firstly, I want to see that for the HDT, uh, HDT modules and the cell and the modules, there should be three key points. First is the efficiency, and the second is the cost, and the third one is the reliability. So for the head junction, because so far the cost uh, and the price is still higher. So to, if we want to comp uh, competitive with, the, uh, with other tech cell technology, the 24% cell efficiency is the core. Is this, 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 this efficiency looks like a threshold and a ticket. If, if you want to produce the cell, HDD cell, the efficiency must to no less than 24%. I mean the average cell efficiency. Another one is the cost down because so far uh, if we calculate uh, the material, the uh, equipment investment, uh, the cost of the heterojunction is still higher. So in future, if because the market, uh, they just want to get a cost-effective product. So in future, if we want to uh, want to uh, want to how to say, if we want to uh, make the heterojunction sell as a main product and the mainstream product, mainstream product. The cost down is the key. We must to make the cost very competitive. And uh, the last one is the reliability. Reliability, if I put at the third point, but I think it's the most important point for the cell, not at the HGT cell technology, but also for all the cell technology and for all the module production, the re reliability is the right line. No matter which kind of technology, the reliability is the much, uh, much, uh, much critical. But here I put reliability. The reason is because the performance and the characters of the heterojunction cell is a little different. It's, uh, it's different compared with the, with the perk cell. I will uh, introduce more detail later. So this cell efficiency is, uh, is taken from our cell line. So the cell line now uh, we can get the, so far our average efficiency of the mass production is about 24.0. 4%. So this is average. The highest cell efficiency is uh, about uh, 24.55. Uh, uh, and here is the cost down. So cost down, we think that the main uh, roadmap is that uh, I just list here, uh, the less CO paste to use, the skill for production, and the high yield, or we can see the high throughput of the module production and all the cell production and the module production and also the scenery for used. Scenery for used and also uh, I think in the future the big wafer will also be equipped for this technology and the low indium and the low nitride used. So is this, uh, this is a way for us to consider how to cost down. So for Ryzen and uh, we use the nine bus bar 
And uh, in the, this year, we have already have about 200 uh, 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 milligram uh, reduced. Uh, so I think it's a big approach uh, at this moment. So on, uh, almost a half of the price, uh, the, uh, half of the cost was decreased. And in future, I think in the, this year, next year, we also have the plan to reduce the silver paste uh, about 40 milligram and uh, 60 milligram. So this, uh, this, uh, this research work are still uh, under, under development in our RD department. So another one is the signal wafer. So the signal wafer uh, in, the, in the May of this year and uh, our, uh, our non-plasma uh, HAT cell, we use the cell thickness of uh, 150 uh, micrometer. So this is also a, a very approach now because uh, from the uh, from you know for the perk for the perk cell the uh, the wave, uh, the thickness of the wafer we use is about 175 and 180 uh, micrometer. So we have already uniform it the n type uh, n type wafer for the uh, for the hydrojunction to the 150 micrometer. So by this way we can also decrease the cost of the of our heterojunction cell. So finally, let's talk about the reliability. So as what I talked a moment ago, the reliability is the right line for module. It doesn't matter if it's H, uh, HGT module or the PERC module or any other PV modules, uh, because uh, from this drawing, we can see that in the, in the uh, when the module were used outside, and in the in the in the, the whole life, uh, life uh, uh, period, there are lots of uh, issues happen in the module level. So how to in, uh, how to ensure the reliability? It means that how to ensure the benefit to the customer. So it's very very important. If we can see the technology is a zero, uh, the reliability is a one in front of it. If no reliability, everything is zero. So for the module production in Ryzen, uh, I want to see that uh, because you know for Ryzen, uh, Ryzen uh, for the uh, hydro junction module uh, produced in Ryzen, we use uh, uh, half cut technology uh, and uh, do glass uh, 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 and the do glass uh, encapsulation uh, because you know uh, for the half cut for the half cut uh, technology. Uh, the main issue for the for the HDT cell is the cutting loss because the uh, the film on the uh, hydrojunction cell is very sensitive for the high temperature. If you cut as a normal uh, cell slicing way for the hydrojunction cell, the power loss will be much. So there must be a new way and a unique uh, equipment to slice in the cell to half to ensure that the power loss is similar to the perk cell. Another one is the soldering. Soldering, soldering so far, uh, later I, there are also some pictures in the presentation. Soldering that because you know so far uh, the cell technology, uh, the uh, hydrojunction cell technology is the low temperature technology. The whole process temperature will, will no more than uh, 200 centigrade. But in the normal perk module production, in the soldering, the temperature is much higher than that. So how to do that? So this is also a question. Uh, uh, listed to our uh, engineer, but uh, uh, fortunately we already uh, solved this issue uh, from to select uh, from the way to select some new material of the ribbon and to adjust some uh, some machine or tapping machine um, to solve this issue and make some analysis. And another one, uh, okay. So for the equipment, I think it's mainly for the for the soldering for the tapping machine. Because you know, uh, I know there are so many ways like the smart wire technology is also very good technology for the heterojunction soldering. But, uh, uh, but for, uh, for us, because we have already a very big volume or the big capacity of our module production used the uh, normal tapping machine and tapping line. So how to use the, our, uh, our uh, current tapping line, tapping machines for the heterojunction uh, production, this is also a good way or a necessary way to reduce the cost of the module production. 
And another one is the uh, is the module design. So uh, so uh, because you know uh, our module design is the half cut because the half cut technology uh, in the PV market now uh, we can see it is a kind of standard uh, technology. Uh, if we develop new product of the uh, modules with the hydrogen injection, we also consider about the same size and the same structure with the perk modules because our customer in the final uh, power plant or the some installers they can direct use direct use uh, the the uh, the hydrogen injection modules with the same size. So there will be also a very good things and uh, to the final customers. So here I just put the half cut encapsulation process for the hydrogen junction. Uh, so one reason is that the uh, HC encapsulation is already the standard module technology and the settings for module mass production. If we want to uh, uh, to to reduce the uh, reduce cost in the final uh, in the final installation, we use the same technology and uh, the same module design will be much better than to design new new one. So this is the head ejection cell slicing challenging. Uh, normally uh, for the normal laser cutting, if we used for the uh, for the head ejection cell, we uh, the result we tested is about 0.4% cell efficiency loss. And uh, so far we have the new uh, new uh, process and the new uh, new machine for the slicing. So far, the uh, the spectral cutting we can get uh, uh, we can get the power loss about 0.1 percent. It's already similar or the same as the perk cell we use for the slicing technology. So for this, we need to control the thermal uh, consider about the thermal affected region, and then we need to consider to control the cutting depths and also the slicing method. So it is very important to achieve the similar power loss by the new uh, cell slicing technology. And the, also the, uh, the multi bus bar technology. So this also also be another very standard uh, module process in the perk cell, uh, perk module production. So for the cell, uh, for the for, uh, head ejection cell, we also use the same one, the same, uh, same, uh, same bus bar number, and uh, the same, uh, all the same design for this. It also can uh, use our current equipment to reduce our production cost. And also the multi bus bar has the best uh, benefit to for the uh, silver paste uh, uh, saving. I already mentioned in the in the last several pages for this. So this is the challenge for the MVB soldering. So here I mentioned the S, uh, SW smart wire connection technology. So this is also a very good one, uh, but uh, but this one will uh, will need a new machine and a new technology for this. So for Ryzen now we just still use the uh, the normal tapping machine with the nine bus bar multi uh, uh, multi bus bar uh, soldering. And we call we call it at the low soldering temperature ribbon uh, used and uh, the low soldering low temperature soldering technology. And for this, we also uh, make a lot of tests in advance, uh, such as because you know the most reliability issue for the soldering is that uh, there will be some stress on the ribbon. So this stress uh, will be affect the module reliability much. So our core point is that we must get the uh, uh, the stress-free soldering technology. So this can ensure uh, the uh, uh, module reliability much. So this is also a, a very important technology. And for Ryzen, we have already researched it and get uh, get IP for this. So this is our uh, our Zega series. We call the our HDT uh, product at the Zega series. And uh, so uh, there are three main products. The first one is uh, uh, is uh, with, with the 156, I mean the M2 cell size, and uh, also with the half cut cell uh, encapsulation, and also the MBB, the Nibas bar, and uh, the maximum power is uh, 355 watt. And for this product, we have already uh, have the mass production and the shipments 
at uh, 2020, I mean, this year already more than seven, uh, 70 megawatts uh, already shipped out. And also there is a one uh, big uh, power plant in China, uh, in the Southeast China, and we have already get, uh, uh, get connected to the grid at uh, June the 30th. So I can show the picture later because we also check the, the power yield for this, for this uh, power plant. And then this is uh, uh, one of our, our another product, but the cell for this module, we used uh, uh, G1 cell size and also the nine bus bar design. And also the, uh, the, power, pump, uh, the power of this is the 400, uh, 445 watts. And this one is our another product, mainly focused on the rooftop market because all the modules were designed with black. So it will be very popular and uh, hot in the roof market, rooftop market. And uh, all these three, uh, all these uh, three uh, HDT modules, uh, we use the Douglas encapsulation because this is also very important for the re reliability of the, uh, of the final product. Uh, we know that the heterojection cell is very sensitive to the water, to the vapor. So that's the reason why we design our product with the Douglas, uh, Douglas encapsulation. So this is our test in the third party uh, for the, uh, the stable, uh, for the power temperature coefficient. And the test result is uh, minus 0 uh, 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 0.241. Uh, so I think this is also one uh, major uh, characters for the heterojection uh, modules. Uh, I think for, for the technical detail issues, a lot of person have already introduced, but from the market, situ uh, market consideration, uh, we will introduce our uh, module to the customer to say the head injection module will have the best uh, yield and power generation. So I think for the modules, it is the only one advantage. But how, why, uh, why it is only one advantage? Because there are a lot of uh, good uh, character, technical char characters of the of the uh, of the modules, like the the most stable power temperature coefficient. Uh, like the uh, like the higher like the higher how to say uh, higher beneficiality and the, the high high power generation and uh, also the no LID the no LETID no PID so everything every characters can result in one result it is the uh, higher power generation yield. So for our production and our RD, and we also make the three times IEC uh, uh, test for the for the for the modules. And here is the uh, the actual test result. Uh, so there is one interesting uh, interested thing is that uh, for perk modules, we call there is a light induced degradation. But for the heterojunction junction modules, we can see we can see it is a light induced again. It's also a very, uh, very interesting, uh, interesting and uh, and useful characters for the Hattu junction. And for this, uh, for this uh, characters, uh, Dr. Cui uh, is also uh, our main uh, engineer in our company. They have already make a lot of research on this. And so far, I remember so far in lots of cell lines, they also to add a new machine for to to make the light induced again for the cell itself to increase the cell efficiency. And for our module, we also got a tube root uh, certification and, uh, and uh, passed uh, uh, a lot of the environmental tests, like a, a lot of uh, uh, other tests, like the uh, IEC 62716, uh, something like that. And also, you know, this year there is an All Quality Matters Award uh, initiated by the Tube Highland. And uh, we also get the only one award for the hydrogen uh, junction modules and the power generation simulation. So this is the ranked number one. Also, we get a lot of patent for our cell technology and the module encapsulation technology. So this is, uh, uh, I think it should be the first the biggest uh, grid connected power plant with the heterojunction modules. So this, uh, 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 this uh, is about uh, uh, 25 megawatt in the Southeast China. And Northeast China, and uh, the blue 
blue part is the uh, is the always the hydro uh, junction modules for produced in Ryzen from Ryzen. So this is the overview uh, of the power plant. And here we also make the best yield, uh, uh, how to say it, the power generation yield simulation. And uh, the comparison is the uh, mono uh, MW, uh, MWT uh, modules. It's also kind of, uh, uh, but, uh, but the results show that the, the, the uh, of the yield per kilowatt per year, we can see that for the hydro injection modules, we can get about 16.9% uh, 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 more of the of the power yield but i mean maybe the the, the result is not fair because you know the mwt uh, mwt is uh, modules is the monofacial one but our hydro junction is a bifacial one but if we can only consider above the uh, bifacial modules i think the power gain uh, i mean the the yield gain will be more than eight percent so it is a good a result for the customer because the same power per, uh, the same power of the module but they can get more yield of this and it can decrease the uh, lcoe much for this performance okay so that's all my presentation thank you hi Feng. that was very comprehensive um very nice thanks a lot uh, i think we skip uh, questions now um 